Feel free to check out my tea public after the video. Godzilla became a massive success when it hit Japanese theaters in 1954. Then the unthinkable happened, it got a sequel. One that was pretty rushed and released not even a full year after its predecessor. Instead of Ashiro Honda directing, it was Motoyoshi Oda, who you may know as the director of Toho's Invisible Man in 1954. Whereas the original Godzilla was a dark and bleak film, Godzilla Raids Again, or Godzilla's Counterattack as it's known in Japan, is a bit more lighthearted, and although it doesn't necessarily steer from the anti-nuclear themes, they don't feel as present in this one. And because of this, as well as some rather interesting editing decisions, Godzilla Raids Again is a film where you either love it or hate it. This film isn't really talked about among the Godzilla fanbase when it actually starts something that was very vital to the franchise, monster battles. This is the first movie we see Godzilla fight another monster, which is a staple that will remain for the rest of the series. Here, Godzilla's first opponent is Anguirus, who shares a similar origin to Godzilla and is essentially a giant ankylosaurus, whereas Godzilla was a combination of a T-Rex, Stegosaurus, and an Iguanodon. So using dinosaurs as inspirations for monster designs is definitely carried over. Anguirus did manage to maintain enough popularity to appear in several more films after this one. Anyway, now for the story. Two pilots named Kobayashi and Tsukioka look for fish until Kobayashi needs to make an emergency landing on Iwato Island. This is the first time we see Godzilla who is battling the previously mentioned Anguirus, and to this movie's credit, it does do a good job with starring the monster action early in the film. The first half is essentially the JSDF trying to figure out what to do with them, which then leads to them fighting again which ends up with Anguirus being killed off halfway through the movie. Unfortunately, this makes the last half a bit of a drag because there's a lot of focus on the humans. I don't find them too interesting, but I can get invested in what's going on. And I feel like the special effects here suffer the worst. The Gyakushu Goji suit is pretty hideous with its uneven proportions, but maybe that was intentional to evoke Godzilla's distorted nature. But maybe not because in some shots they insisted on using the puppet from the previous film for close-ups. As for Anguirus, he doesn't look too bad, definitely looks menacing and terrifying even if I prefer his Destroy All Monsters look. But what about the American version handled by Warner Brothers? Well, considering how the critical reception of Godzilla King of the Monsters ranged from negative to mixed stateside in which people criticized it for its primitive nature in terms of its technical aspects, it would make sense for them to rename Godzilla Raids again to Gigantus the Fire Monster. In the end, I don't personally think Godzilla Raids again is entirely a bad film, but I do find it to be forgettable. I am willing to forgive it because how are you ever going to top one of the greatest films Japanese cinema has to offer? This would be the last to be seen of Godzilla for a while, so stay tuned for something a little different. That's all I have for today's History of Godzilla. Thank you for watching, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys later.